<laughs> I've got Gerald Salente with me. Hello, Gerald. How are hey, you? Hey, good, John. How are you? Oh, fair to Midland, mostly waiting for the bottom to drop out in Europe. How's how's Greece working out for you? <laughs> yeah, well, everything is just slipping along fine. <laughs> and that's the way you spell Greece, right? That, that, yeah, that yeah, it means, it means greasing the bankers. Yeah, that, and, but but Uncle Ben, don't worry, helicopter Ben's coming to the rescue. He's hinting that there's going to be a QE. What is this three? Yeah, uh, the QEs have never stopped. Well, and, 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 Gerald, what is this twist and shout stuff that was supposed to end by the end of the year? I mean, wasn't that their quantitative easing in, at play? John, if anybody doesn't get it now, they're never going to get it. And the get is that the whole game is rigged. We see it with the LIBOR scandal. We see it time and time again. Anybody to me that invests in the financial markets gets what they deserve. And, you know, people think that, you know, I invested with MF Global and, you know, I deserve to lose my money. No, I wasn't investing with them. I was just using them as a brokerage firm to buy gold for possession. That's all. And they robbed my segregated account. Now, when you're talking about putting money into mutual funds, I don't care whatever you're putting it into, stocks, the brokerage firms, the whole system, it's not worth anything. We just saw it again with Peregrine uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you're going to continue to see it on and on and on. I don't care who it is, whatever name it is. If you don't have the money in your possession, guess what? You don't have any money. It's all up for grabs, and they're grabbing it from you. I said this when the TARP program began. It was the biggest bank robbery in world history, and the banks are doing the robbing. Does anybody get it yet? The stock market, Gerald, is scared to death that the money coming out of the Treasury is going to dry up. Now, we've already exceeded 100% of GDP. I could whip out some more facts and figures, but hey, <laughs> let's just say that we're in the hole for almost 17 trillion dollars and they believe that they can bail the situation out with more of the same kind of money has not anybody aside from folks like yourself figured out that you cannot retire this monstrosity of debt with more debt Yes, a lot of, not only myself, there are a lot of people that see this, but you know, we're coming out with the New Trends Journal at the end of this week. And there's a story in there by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who of course was the former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Ronald Reagan. And he's making an analysis and, and forecast that we've never seen before. They know what they're doing. And then when you look at the library scandal and all of these other things going on, Guess what? They're all making money off this. That's what's going on. They don't care whether or not it fixes anything. They have enough games in play where no matter what the game is, it's rigged and they're making money off it. That's what he's uncovered in this Trends Journal in an erudite way like I've never read before. And he's the only person that I've ever read or heard, and he, this is a first and, and it's an exclusive in the Trends Journal, that he's making it clear why this is going on. Sure, they're not that stupid. They know that if you have a fourth mortgage and you take out a fifth mortgage, you'll never repay it. They're making money on the game no matter what the game is. That's the story. You know, I saw when this LIBOR scandal and everybody in England was walking on eggshells, and then the... Uh, solution to the one of the possible solutions was offered Gerald uh, to get things kind of back on track to go back to the glass steagall you know what we, we need to reinstitute that to get the investment banks and the gamblers the hell out of the game and I'm listening to this and I'm going really well you've burnt the barn down the horse didn't even get out who cares if the door was open or closed the barn is burnt down and I, I mentioned to Robbie Noel, that's uh, on the program here with me, that, look, 
one of the architects of this, the one of the people that got this done was none other than Robert Rubin. Robert Rubin is um, a guest commentator inside whatever guru uh, on cable television news networks. But there he is, and he was one of the architects to allow this blending of the two commercial banks and investment banks to take place in the first. And I'm looking at this, Gerald, and I'm going, really? So Bank of England thinks it's a good idea that we should go back to the Glass-Steagall type of thing after they burnt the barn down. Yeah, again, you, you nailed it. I mean, it was Robert Rubin under the Clinton administration that was responsible for putting the deregulation of the death of Glass-Steagall into play. And what also happened as well that many people forgot about was where did Robert Rubin go after that? Couldn't have been to uh, Citigroup. They were one of the beneficiaries of that. You remember that wonderful guy, Sandy Weil? <laughs> you know, the former CEO of um, uh, Travelers? And he was going to create a wonderful one-stop financial supermarket. And he built it with Smith Barney and Citigroup and Travelers. Oh, and how all the media... Oh, wonderful Sandy. What a genius. What a genius. And didn't Robert Rubin work for them after he left Treasury? And, and to the best of my recollection, didn't he pull in over $100 million? You know, so, I mean, any, anybody that believes any of this stuff deserves what they get. You know, all aboard. Next train to Auschwitz. Come on, get on board. You're going to have a wonderful time there. You'll have a, you'll have a great day. Yes, ac accommodations are ready and waiting for That's you. That's right. Yeah. They're right. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, we have uh, volleyball, handball. They played handball back then. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you what. I, well, third day of losses on Wall Street, they seem to be kind of down. I'm, I'm looking at some major hitters, uh, stocks out there taking hits of 15, 20, haircuts of 25%. But, you know, the market is still there. Uh, good news, I guess, to counter that, we're going to have another quantitative easing. They're not going to let the economies crash. They're going to bring them down, as I see it. And, and help me with this one, Gerald, because we're in la-la land. I might as well be ordering uh, orbiting Saturn right now. At what point? At what point do they leave the system go because they can't monetize it? They're letting it go now. Pick up the news. Read the headlines. Watch out. Those Syrians have chemical weapons. Hey, sound familiar? Hey, where's Dick Cheney and George Bush? Ah, we got Obama and Hillary, Hillary Clinton. We don't need them. Oh, we got Netanyahu screaming out there. Watch out. You know, all this, you know those people in Bulgaria? They were blown up by Hezbollah and Iran. They knew it right away. Oh, yeah, they did DNA on all those incinerated people, the ashes that were left behind. Not one, not one tangible piece of proof. And all of the prostitutes are repeating it. They're taking us to war. We've seen this before. I say it over and over again. Follow the timeline. It's simple. The crash of 29, the Great Depression, currency wars, trade wars, World War II. The Panic of 08, the Great Recession slash Depression. I love it, John. You know, uh, Spain may go into another recession. Recession? They got 25% unemployment. The country's up for grabs. Well, it's only a recession. It doesn't have 800 quarters of, uh, of uh, GDP decline. I just made that up, and why not? I make everything else up because I'm one of the sociopaths that I'll call a Fed chairman, or a politician, or a president, or a chancellor. How many? Ta they're taking us to war. We, we have, now have currency wars. Trade wars are heating up. They're tra taking us to war against Syria and Iran. How much more proof do people need? The situation, and the only thing that I can see, Gerald, that uh, stalled off uh, the Iran situation was the vested business interests that Russia and China has. Um, in Iran. China wants to develop their oil fields. Uh, that's billions of dollars for investment money. Uh, we also know that they didn't want to deal with the United States dollar. Ooh, shame on them. 
good for them, bad for the U.S. dollar. And the deals were made all the time. Japan didn't want to be hamstrung by trading everything, and first we've got to turn it into dollars and then shove it down somebody's throat. China and Japan said, look, we're going to do a side deal here. We'll, we'll trade with the yuan and the yen. We don't need the United States dollars. Yeah, but it looks, exactly. like, it looks like they're shifting their focus away from uh, Iran and uh, using Syria yeah. as the proxy for the next war, which is more than likely where it will all emanate from. Well, that's number that's number six on the seven list, and the seventh uh, they they're a little out of turn here, as I mentioned. There are some economic problems that other major com uh, countries on the planet are giving them, you know, the China and and Russia deal here. So yeah, let's concentrate on Syria. But this is either sixth or seventh on their list that they were going to pop m the Middle Eastern countries inside out. It, it it's already been known who the list is, Gerald. Well, again, you know, what we, you, to answer your question about they can't save the economy, so what are they going to do? And this is what we said when TARP began. When all else fails, they take you to war. And it was just, just pointed out, you know, this isn't about Syria. It's about Iran. Syria and Iran, you know, they're the two great allies in the Middle East, in the United States and Israel, well, and, and, the, and the kingdoms. You know, dictators are bad. Kings are good, by the way. You know, even though the women can't drive, you know, or anything else in Saudi Arabia, they're okay because they're the kings. And I read fairy tales. Kings are always nice. But dictators, they're bad. Autocrats, they're bad. So we've got to get rid of the, and especially autocrats and dictators that aren't our friends. If they're friendly, then they're okay. But going back to Syria, you know, this is about Iran. And, and it's Iran's the last ally. And it's also about Hezbollah. You know, people are forgetting this. You know, the Israelis got their clock cleaned when they invaded Lebanon the last time. Hezbollah threw them out. And where did they get all their armaments from? They got them from Syria and Iran. That's what this is about. It's about the United States and Israel securing the Middle East with no interference and in all of the oil. So let's make this 100% clear. So that's what this really, this war, and now you hear, you know, Syria has chemical weapons. Israel has, what, 400 <laughs> nuclear weapons? Yeah, at least. At least. Oh, oh and they're going to use them against their people. Oh, yeah, how do you know this? Hey, how about showing me those weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein had? I, I was just going to say that, Gerald. Are they going to really pull that little old cassette tape off of the shelf, blow the dust off of it, and plug it back in and expect it to fly? It is. They're doing it already. Pick up the toilet paper of record, the New York Times. Pick up the Wall Street Journal. Listen to CNN News. They are. They're playing the same song over and over again, over and over again. But you know what doesn't make the news? You know, remember Neil Barofsky? He was the guy that was put in head, ahead, put in charge of, watching over where all the money went from TARP. They wrote a, he, he wrote a book. It's hardly getting any play. But here's a quote from that book. The suspicion that the system is rigged in favor of the largest banks and the elites, so they play by their own set of rules, to the disfavor of the taxpayers who have funded their bailout are true. That's what he says. This is the guy that was the watchdog put in place by the president under Bush. Under Bush and under Obama, he quit because they were stifling the truth. This is what they don't want the people to hear. Instead, they play these phony tapes. As you mentioned, they're playing the videotape again. Mm. Watch out for those chemical weapons. Hey, you know that next uh, th that next sound you might hear, that next gun that goes off, may be a mushroom cloud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We 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 in mainstream media we can't discuss nuclear weapons. We can only tell the people that somebody wants to build them. And as I've argued before, you know, if one of your neighbors 
has firepower that could just level your house. And, well, you're not on great terms with them, so just in case, you're not going to take any offensive action. You're going to go strictly defensive. Well, I'm at least going to have some stuff around here that might give me a fighting chance if my neighbor goes Aurora, Colorado on me. But, see, this is a bad thing. We can't have people that can determine their own fates and their own future. Let's not forget, Gerald, the map of the Middle East Thanks to our British friends, that's what they gave us. New boundaries, new countries, new whatever. And it seems as always we're rolling in after the British start something, we're rolling in to finish off the end game scenario. And let's not forget the French. Oh well. their, their roles in there too, particularly with Syria and Lebanon. You know, and and, and they never stop. And you hear these little these little weasels, these little chicken hawks. Men with the size of uh, cojones, the size of mothballs, you know, telling everybody what, you know, what we have to do. Here's my deal. Any so-called commander-in-chief that wants to start a war, lead the troops, command the troops, and stop this baloney. Any two-bit politician with a big mouth that wants to go to war, pack up your gear, take your wife and your kids and go fight the war. We're, 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 we're using military contractors to, for in, in food service and to make beds and on and on. There's a job for you over there. If you want to go fight a war, lead the charge, go do your duty, or shut your mouth. Because I don't want to go into it, and I don't want to give you my money. So how about that? And the reason why they're shutting us down like this and you're not allowed to have any firepower, only your neighbor is. It's simple, John. That's what happens in fascist nations. Well, and I, you were mentioning <laughs> before, and what popped into my mind was, um, who are we in this country now? The empire has elected, well, this is the second king, George Bush, Jr., and now we have Barack Obama. We can fly drones, do destructive damage in countries. There are no, uh, there's no declaration of wars. We can fly the drones over airspace in the United States to take care of their terrorist problems. It's not stopping. They've spent, what, upwards to $6 trillion in the Middle East? And the only thing that we've done is added death and destruction and more instability in every country we have touched. Everyone without exception. And there's a reason for it. This is the behavior of psychopaths. That's what they do. And they're doing it all over again. They're doing it now in Syria. I mean, what was Syria? Syria wasn't bothering anybody until the United States and the Arab countries started instigating, and, and the U.K. and France started instigating the civil war over there. We wrote about this pick up the Spring Trends Journal 2011. As a matter of fact, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts did a piece in there as well about why Syria was ready to explode. It all has to do with that's the only port that the Russians had. The Libya war was heating up. And again, the NATO, the Arab League, and the United States want no part of anybody else in the Middle East except themselves. So this was all a trend that was predicted, and the end is predictable. It will be as bloody, as costly, and as destructive as the Iraq War, the Afghan War, and every other war that the United States has started since World War II. They end in abject defeat, and they call them victory just like they're doing now with Afghanistan and Iraq. Hey, well, how many people died yesterday, two days ago in Iraq? Oh, only a hundred. Hey, isn't it great? Nobody will argue, says Weasel Cheney, that the world is better off without Saddam Hussein. I'll argue that place was in a lot better shape before you guys went in there and destroyed it, and they weren't bothering me. They were no threat to the United States whatsoever. None at all. And uh, the the track that we have, Gerald, is one million four hundred and roughly fifty thousand dead Iraqis. 
Now, is that our yeah, notion? You, you know that more Americans have died in uh, those two Iraq wars than were killed in Vietnam. As you know, Vietnam cost 58,000 lives. Uh, the true uh, figures uh, from both Iraq wars are 78,000 uh, U.S. casualties. Wow. Before you get out of here, Gerald, uh, today, I want to I want to point people to your Trends Journal. And uh, I'm looking at your uh, your order form page. And these are screaming deals. Uh, you want to do some some serious visionary insight here? You want to do some strategic planning? Uh, this man is just not about economies and what's going on with that. Much, much more. Uh, one year online subscription. 99 bucks. Let, let me let me tell you something folks. The one thing that is most valuable in this world today is current and accurate information. Uh that's something you don't get off the mainstream media or the Bloomberg boys when they're talking to you. Uh 2 years online, 175 the best value and this is a hell of a reduction of almost uh, 75 bucks. 3 years online for $225. Now, can people order this online? Yes, trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And also, John, every day we do trends in the news features. We do the real news, the real trend news, the current events forming future trends. And they get that as well. Plus, we have Trends Live View special mini documentaries twice a month in what's going on. And a, and a cast of contributors that, you know, there, there are no trend forecasters anywhere, no magazine like it uh, that we provide. Also, just to me mention, we know that people are having a difficult time, and as you go on that order page, you see there's a discount request form. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, it's easy. Just fill it out. Tell us, you know, just a little couple of words, nothing personal, and we'll do the very best to make it available to everybody because we're concerned about what's going on. You know, I've only had, I've had one premonition before, and then you go to our website at trendsjournal.com, go to the forecast page, and look up 9-11. It's right there. And there's a headline from USA Today, December 14, 2000. 2001 won't be our year, Trends here says. I warned that Americans in the Trends Journal wouldn't be safe at home or abroad. I have that same kind of feeling right now. I've never been more worried about our future than, I, than, than the future uh, are, of the are you Are you having fears of foreboding? <laughs> to put it mildly. Uh, because I've been suffering from that of late, and I, I just boiled it down to uh, I'm suffering from crisis fatigue. No, it's everything is coming to a head. You look at we talk about the euro crisis, and look look again. Go back to the prostitute media. After they supposedly did a deal a month ago, you saw the stock market zoom up three percent. Oh, it was solved, and now you know what? It, what is Spanish yields are over seven percent on bonds and look at the markets they continue to decline as you were pointing out john and and so then you have what's going on in syria every day there's the drumbeat coming from israel coming from the u.s about syria the weapons of mass destruction and the threats to the world and then you keep going around the world and it's one after another iran now is they're trying to to, to foment war with them and then you look right back here in the united states our social fabric is breaking down all of these clowns out there calling about gun control. I mean, gun control. Well, how many hundreds of millions of guns out there? What are you going to control? Yeah. And you, oh, how about how about gun control? Hey, who are who are the most armed people in the world? Who have more guns per capita than anybody? That would be us. No. Nope. No. Switzerland. Switzerland. <laughs> They're all armed. Uh, you don't see them blowing their brains out. Yeah. You know why? Because their society isn't falling into degradation like ours. You look at this Batman. You know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, Batman and Robin on TV. It was fun. Now look how dark it is. Everything's dark. Listen to the music. Look at the way people dress. The fish rots from the head down. I'm glad you called me on Tuesday, John. After we get off the phone, we could have a Terror Tuesday. <laughs> we could decide who we're going to kill with drones in Pakistan and Yemen or, or in, 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 in Africa. That's what the United States is doing. That's what El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos, I say that because we're turning into a banana republic. 
It's all rotting because of the immorality of this nation. It would be one thing if we were turning into a banana republic. That was a never was or a wannabe. We once were and are, are no longer. Trendsjournal.com, trendsresearch.com. Ladies and gentlemen, take advantage of this man's wisdom. Go to his website, order the Trends Journal. You will not be sorry that you did. Hey, Gerald, thank you. Hey, thanks for having me on. Okay. All right, sir. Thanks.